I think what's quite interesting is what the Scottish Tories have already come out with, which is essentially a, a further devolution deal that hands the Scottish Parliament all power under income tax, except the level of the personal allowance. I, I think this is a sign that, that the Scottish referendum isn't going to be the end of the matter. Um, even if Scotland votes no, far more power is going to go from Westminster to Holyrood. Um, now, I mean, that raises a question about what do you do about England? It's going to make all the asymmetries in the Union even more profound. Now, it used to be said that the answer to the West Arabian question, that the fact that Scottish MPs can vote on, on matters that affect England, but English MPs can't vote on some matters that devolve matters that affect Scotland, was to stop asking it. I don't think you can do that now because of UKIP. UKIP are quite clear that they want an English Parliament and a fully federal UK. I mean, that means that both the Labour and the Tories are going to have to have an answer to the English question. I think people are slowly starting to, to wake up to, to how close the referendum is. We had Gordon Brown in Westminster on Monday speaking to a lot of journalists where basically he took every opportunity to, in a very soft voice, criticise David Cameron's handling of the debate. Overall, he talked about politicians coming up to Scotland to say Britain says no to this, Britain says no to that. He managed to slip in just in a sentence that a lot of political correspondents from Scotland who were sitting in the press gallery initially missed the suggestion that David Cameron should debate Alex Salmon. So there's still that kind of infighting. You do have to feel for Alistair Darling, who's trying to hold together this Better Together campaign, which doesn't really work together at all. They're, they're talking about the union, but they can't even unite as they campaign for it. The nation was meant to kill nationalism, stone dead. Yeah. It's resulted in a referendum on independence. Um, it has resulted in a situation where politicians at Westminster are uh, profoundly ignorant of what is going on at Holyrood. If you talk to, 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 to politicians of, of all parties when they go to Scotland, they are petrified about being asked questions because they don't know what's happening. I mean, they probably have about as much idea of what is going on in Scottish domestic politics as they do what is going on in American domestic politics. It has become a real problem that, that, that if you listen to the Today programme in the morning, go through the number of items that don't apply to Scotland in the, in the British news stories. British in inverted commas, uh, and it's huge, and it's a massive problem. It, it's, 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 you, you've got a situation where you've got two political elites talking past each other, you've got separate national political conversations. I think it's important that there are cultural figures coming out mm. of this as well. The, the cultural side of the, of the Yes campaign has so far been much stronger, but I thought J.K. Rowling's statement as well was really interesting because she preempted, as James said, the backlash from the extreme wing of the nationalists, which is really important in turning swing voters against the nationalists because if they see it as being an irrational, overly emotional, vindictive campaign mm. then that will turn them away from it. In the same way as swing voters down here are turned off party leaders if they're seen to be out of touch, if they're not seen to be nice enough. That's a, a key factor. And I think also the fact that she then listed her Scottish credentials and said that she suspected that she was going to be questioned for not being Scottish enough is another important thing that she's actually saying that people are trying to be trying, nationalists are trying to exclude people mm. from the debate. I mean, she's also a Scot who stayed in Scotland. I think this is important. I think one, one of the things that has come out in, in this campaign is that, 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 for example, down here we would all think of Alistair Darling, Danny Alexander, as Scots. As, uh, they are Scots who sit for Scottish seats, you know. Um, but up there, there is some taint on them in the debate because they sit in the Westminster Parliament, not the Scottish Parliament, that they've chosen to make their career down here. Um, I mean, the fact that J.K. Rowling has a big house in Edinburgh, that this is her base, will, will make this a particularly, um, uh, a particularly powerful endorsement of the union.